Hey traders, it's John Fortune here with this week's weekly Forex forecast. Hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Last week was a big week in the markets. We had some very important data coming out of the US. And what was interesting was the data was negative, but we saw stocks rally. So what does this mean for the markets? Does this mean that the risk of a sell-off in stocks has disappeared? I would argue no. And we're going to go through in today's video exactly what I think is coming next, not just for Forex, but also for stocks and markets in general. Okay, so let's look at the very important data that came out last week. We had an interest rate rise out of the US. It was in line with expectations from 1.75% to 2.5%. But this was into what? This was a rate hike into a recession. Now, there is a very outside possibility that GDP gets revised positive. I think that's unlikely. And it is, in fact, the case that the US has been in a recession since January. Some people like to try and change the meaning of that and say, well, the labor market's strong, etc. But the problem is the labor market is one of the last things to go usually. So I would very much expect cracks to start to appear in the labor market in the near future. And this makes this an unprecedented time because very often before the economy gets into a recession, the Fed pivots and actually prevents a recession by easing or loosening monetary policy. This time we are confirmed as being in a recession in the US and we're talking about the US here because it's the world's largest consumer. So if the US goes into a recession, the world will go into recession. But we have an unprecedented situation where the Fed is hiking into a recession and it's doing this to control inflation, which has started to get out of hand. Now, the other very important piece of data, which may have gone unnoticed last week, was core PCE price index. The headlines very often talk about CPI, which is, of course, the headline inflation print. But the Federal Reserve's preferred measure of inflation is core PCE. So that's personal expenditures for the consumer, but stripped out of food and energy. So X food and energy. So core PCE. And this actually came out month over month, not just higher, but higher than expected. So we're in a situation where GDP has contracted. The US is in a recession already. And at the same time, inflation is still rising, even by the Fed's own preferred measure of inflation, which is the core PCE price index. So the idea that the Fed is going to pivot and we're going to get a big rally in stocks and everything is going to be great again seems extremely unlikely unless the Federal Reserve is prepared to let inflation spiral out of control, which they are not. They've stated many, many times they are not prepared to do that and that they're prepared to control inflation at the expense even of growth. And if we look at the last rate statement that came out of FOMC on the 27th of July, the Fed themselves are saying that they anticipate ongoing increases in the Fed funds rate. So last week we had the US in a confirmed recession, inflation still increasing by the Fed's own preferred measure and the Fed themselves telling you that they anticipate further hikes in interest rates. That is not a good fundamental outlook for the stock market. If we jump ahead to this week, there is also some very, very important data to pay attention to. The ISM manufacturing PMI, we don't usually look at this, but it's getting very close to the 50 level, which would signal a contraction in the economy. If this comes out unexpectedly, not just below forecast, but below 50, that is going to be compounding the situation you have in the US. And that again is going to be very, very negative for stocks because a lot of institutional investors use ISM manufacturing PMIs as part of their investing framework. So watch out for that next week. And we also have next week as well, the services PMIs, which again, watch out for this, if not next month in the coming months to dip below 50 and add another very important piece of data confirming recessionary conditions in the US. So we're not below 50 in services PMI or manufacturing PMI, but look out for that over the next couple of months. We also have next week, very importantly, interest rate decision out of Australia. So we're going to look at the Aussie currency today, which is something that I am interested in next week, but it will be from Tuesday onwards. And finally, we have an interest rate decision out of the UK on Thursday. And we also have non-farm payrolls out of the US on Friday. Okay, so let's have a look at the scorecards heading into this week. And you can see here something very, very interesting. Once I added in all of the data out of last week, which included all the important data just discussed, you can see the Forex markets did not like the data that came out last week. Unlike stocks, which rallied, and I think personally, this is probably 
a bear market rally which is going to suck in new buyers before rolling over and we're going to discuss that more in today's video but unlike stocks the forex market did not like that data and we went very risk off when you see all currencies including the US dollar weakening on a one month forward looking basis and only the yen appreciating that is as risk off as it gets in forex so although stocks rallied last week the forex market said no we're not having that that was not good and when we input the data as well to the commodity scorecards and also the yield curve scorecard which i also do for the us they also did not like the data last week it was only stocks which rallied and went risk on alongside crypto of course which is basically just high beta version of stocks but the commodity markets, the bond market, and also the forex market did not like that. And it's one of the main reasons why I think stocks could start to roll over in the near future. Okay, so in terms of the markets, I'm going to be looking at trading in forex next week. Really, there's not much that needs to be discussed here because the Swiss franc is clearly the only long in town as it currently stands. And if you remember last week, Euro franc was the number one market that I was looking at trading and it was a great short to the downside last week. Again, I think Swiss franc is set to outperform and that is my favorite long. And I'm going to be again looking at Euro franc to the downside because the Euro is currently scored as the weakest currency on a one to four week forward looking basis. And I'm also going to be interested in pound franc to the downside. Because there's not too much on offer in terms of what we're looking at here, I am going to also look at some of the other commodity currencies like New Zealand and CAD to the downside against the Swiss franc. We'll also even have a look at US dollar versus the Swiss franc, although it's not my favorite. My second favorite long is the Australian dollar, but you can see it only just about clears the bullish to neutral score. It's only the Swiss franc which has not just a bullish score, which is two and above, actually has a strong bullish. So I am going to look at some Aussie pairs, and that's going to be after the interest rates is on Tuesday. But they will be against the very weakest currencies because the Aussie itself is not that strong. So I will look at Euro Aussie and Pound Aussie in today's video. And finally, if you really want, although not one of my favorite trades because the yen is still currently weak. But based on the momentum we saw last week and anticipating the yen to continue this way, we can look at maybe one or two yen pairs, such as, again, only the weakest I would be interested in, euro yen to the downside and perhaps pound yen to the downside. Okay, so let's have a look at the individual currencies themselves, starting with the DXY. As it currently stands, the DXY is just correcting. The DXY really hasn't done much in the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, basically two to three trading weeks. But there is no momentum to the downside here. This is just a correction. And what it looks like is actually when you have waves within a market, very often they alternate in form between shallow and deep. And you can see the first correction here was shallow in form. And it looks to me like we just simply have a deeper correction. You know, that's the alternation, the law of alternation goes from shallow to deeper. It doesn't always happen, of course, but very often you see this and it does in all probability look like we're going to get another rally to the upside in the DXY. If that's the case, is that risk on or risk off? That's risk off. And again, it's another piece of evidence to suggest that this recent rally in stocks could be in trouble. So I am bullish overall on the DXY. It is in a full-blown bull market, but at the moment it's just correcting. Next is the Euro. Again, very much just like the DXY, but the opposite, we've just been correcting. And again, I just view this as a near-term correction. I think we could come up a bit higher and look for a test of this low over here. And remember this, what we're looking at here, because this is something you're going to see come up again and again. And I think explains what we could be seeing in a number of the markets in terms of risk on or risk off. That is a very small one, possibly two weeks of risk on, as we see, and I would imagine maybe just one week. And don't forget, next week is the first week of the month. What happens? The first week of the month, very often you get a correction because if you have a monthly candle, for example, like this, very often they will have a wick on each end. And the first one is usually, if the market is coming down like this, you get that first week in the month which corrects, very much like we're seeing here, possibly into the previous low. Then you get the sell off two, three weeks, and then right at the end of the month, you get some profit taken and that causes the lower candle. This is what I think we could very well be seeing in a number of the markets. And in Euro dollar, that would be a test of the low first week and then start to roll over towards a 0.99610 in subsequent weeks. 
Keep this in your mind as we go through the markets, because if this is the case, if we're going to get one, maybe two weeks of risk on before rolling over into risk off, that is going to permeate all of the markets. It won't just be euro dollar. Next is the pound. I am bearish on the pound. This is technically still structured to the downside, although I did note recently we've been lacking a bit of momentum, but we're also lacking momentum to the upside. There's no explosive move here. And if we are heading higher in the DXY, I anticipate the pound to come down. So I'm looking for declines in the pound. Next is the Swiss franc. The Swiss franc is still making high highs and high lows, although it's not in a full blown bull market. We don't have really strong momentum as we do in the DXY. You can see though, there's a very good chance we're probably gonna come up and test this high and then onto the 1.0625. So this opportunity next week is where I think the best chance to get paid is. And the scorecards are telling us the Swiss franc really is the best place to look to make money next week. The Japanese yen, you can see we did get a little bit of, and this could be the start of a bigger short covering rally. I'm not bullish on the yen per se. That's why when I discussed perhaps Euro Yen and Pound Yen, I'm, I'll only be looking at the very weakest currencies vis-a-vis -vis the Yen because the Yen is not particularly bullish. Perhaps we come back and retest the 0 0.00790 here in the Yen and that of course would be a retest of the major breakout. Next is the CAD and the CAD is really just not going anywhere. I mean, this is technically speaking just neutral and this is more or less reflected in fact in the one month forward looking scores which is basically telling us as it currently stands this is probably just going to continue to correct over the next one to four weeks and this is not particularly bullish it's not particularly bearish as it currently stands and it's probably going to remain that way in the near future next is the aussie we do have the interest rate decision next week so based on what comes out of the interest rate decision you could see this go either way because the Australian dollar is the second strongest currency after the Swiss franc, I would still favor long positions vis-a-vis -vis other currencies. So if we get a correction like this and then on the interest rate decision we break higher, that would be the opportunity to look for pullbacks and perhaps we come back and retest this and this just becomes a big range in the Australian dollar. And this move post interest rate decision would be the opportunity to short pound Aussie and Euro Aussie. And last but not least, we have the New Zealand dollar. We've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 weeks of correction, and we've barely gone anywhere, which is a very small correction in these 12 weeks. Compare that to these 12 weeks to the downside. You can see this is impulsive. This is telling you the market's more likely to continue here. This is corrective. So I am looking for the declines in the New Zealand, and it is a market that I'd be interested in shorting, primarily against the Swiss franc, but in general, I would favor New Zealand shorts. Okay, so let's have a look at the markets themselves, starting with crude oil. Crude oil is an overall downtrend. I am looking for the declines and have been for the last couple of weeks. However, again, just like a lot of the markets, we've really just gone nowhere. We corrected. And last week, we attempted an inverse head and shoulders breakout in a downtrend, which of course is a bad idea to buy, generally speaking, over the long run. That's not going to make you money. So for us looking to short this, this is a good opportunity to see if we can capitalize on the mistakes of these traders who tried to pick the bottom here essentially by buying this inverse head and shoulders. And now this has been rejected down here. Look for the market to break down with momentum. And that would be the opportunity once we break through like this to look for shorts down to the 89.32. So I do like crude oil next week. And I think if we do sell off here, this is going to add weight to CAD shorts alongside the fact that the Canadian dollar has also reduced its score in the one month forward looking scores. Next is Euro Frank. This was a fantastic short last week. Uh, this actually made my week, this currency. This was actually my best market that I traded last week. And you can see we had one, two, three really good sell-offs in this market. We took out the target and then some. Heading into this week, we're looking to maybe make a very mini double bottom. So any pullback, look for the market to correct. And any pullback is viewed as an opportunity to look for shorts once again into the 0 0.9652. Next is CAD Frank. You can see CAD Frank has been making its way to the downside, but it's lacking momentum, lacking momentum. I think we could actually start to see this sell off because of this as the buyers eventually capitulate. Any pullback in this market, therefore, is viewed next week as an opportunity to look for bullish reversals, sorry, bearish reversals to the downside. And I'm going to be looking at shorts into the 0 0.7364. Next is New Zealand franc. Now we've had a long correction here because we had such strong sell-off previously. And we do now look to be breaking out of this. And again, very similar to what we looked at in CAD franc. I think when you start to see the market declining like this and there's a lack of momentum at the beginning, you tend to get a steeper sell-off because the buyers capitulate. I think we could potentially see that next week. So any pullback in this market is going to be an opportunity next week to look for bearish reversals. And I'm going to be looking first of all down to the previous low, but 
I would like to see this come down overall to the 0 0.5798. Next is pound franc. This was the market actually I looked at shorting last week, but I didn't get much out of it. And this week it's highlighted in blue instead of gold because we have the interest rate decision out of the UK on Thursday. So I prefer these three markets, but any pullback in this market, especially if we correct into the interest rate decision and then we sell off, that would be opportunity to look for pullbacks and then further declines onto the 1.1496. And last, and in this case, in fact, least as well, is US dollar Swiss franc, not highlighted in gold because I prefer the risk on currencies versus the franc. US dollar Swiss franc is two risk off currencies. And so that's why it's not highlighted in gold. But if we do correct in this market, any pullback next week is simply viewed as a potential opportunity to look for shorts into the 0 0.9443. Next is Euro Aussie, highlighted in blue alongside pound Aussie because we have the Australian interest rate decision on Tuesday. I would like to see this pulling back. And then because I have an overall bullish bias because of the scorecards on the Aussie, I would like to see this sell off on Tuesday. That would set up a great opportunity to look for pullbacks into the 1.4329. So keep an eye out for this, but I do like it, but it has to be after Tuesday. Pound Aussie, I also like this, but again, won't be trading it until the interest rate decision. I like it less because we also have a UK interest rate decision. So two interest rate decisions in the week. It's not fantastic because I prefer Euro Aussie. That's what I'll focus on. But if you do get a reversal to the downside on Tuesday, there may be an opportunity to thread the needle into Thursday for further declines down to the previous low and then on to the 1.7174. And finally, we'll look at a couple of yen pairs, Euro yen and pound yen. Euro yen is my favorite market that I'm going to be looking to trade against the yen if the opportunity arises. It's probably, to be honest with you, because we have a UK interest rate decision, it's probably the only yen pair I'm going to personally look to trade. We do have momentum to the downside, so any pullback next week, look for a bearish breakout or reversal to the downside. And I'm going to be looking for shorts into the 134.75. I do like Euro yen next week, based on the momentum we're seeing in the pro scorecards for the Japanese yen. And finally, pound yen. It is highlighted in blue to remind you have a UK interest rate decision. But again, that's not till Thursday. So perhaps there's an opportunity to thread the needle between the start of the week and the interest rate decision. Any pullback is going to be viewed as an opportunity to look for bearish breakouts into the 160.39. Okay, so let's have a look at gold, silver and Bitcoin. And then we're going to look at stocks and just discuss the stock market a little bit as well. In terms of the gold silver ratio, you can see we were coming up to the previous target here and we just rolled over and sold off. And this was because we saw an outperformance in silver last week. And this is not really informative in my opinion because this is a sell off. Yes, maybe in the near term, it corrects like this and then comes down again. Overall, I think this is just telling us that basically there's no clear favorite now between gold and silver. And especially if this starts to pull back and range, you can basically short gold or silver without having a particular preference in either of them as it currently stands. Maybe in the near term, you actually have a preference in shorting gold even because it is coming down against silver at least for the time being. So the first market we're going to look at is gold and gold is not highlighted here, neither is silver as one of my favorites. Why? Because the DXY pairs I'm currently waiting because the correction in the DXY hasn't finished, we haven't started to move and the scorecards are still currently neutral. But what I do think is coming in gold is as the market continues to rise, remember what we discussed in Euro dollar as well, the market comes up maybe for a week or two, tests the underside of the previous low, which is just simply a stair step in a downtrend. And this is where we could see the first week of the month basically print the wick. And then we could see the decline over the month. And you can see this is taking place now in gold as well as Euro dollar. So perhaps in the near term, we trade into the 1787.31. I'm not going to be looking to buy this as it currently stands. I'm focused on the shorts, but it needs to break down first. And again, that might not be next week. This may take a week or two to take out the high and then start to roll over. So watch this previous low in gold because that is where we could start to see this roll over to the downside and coincide with the next rally in the dollar. Next is silver. So what's happening in silver? We had a big risk on move. Is the downtrend over in silver? Well, maybe, but we would need to clear this previous low first. As it currently stands, this is not a bullish chart. We're below the 2145, which was the major breakout to the downside. The DXY looks like it's set to put a new high in, and silver is actually just approaching the previous low in a downtrend. So again, I wouldn't be surprised to see this rising on a little bit of risk on sentiment over the next week or so. But overall, what I'm looking for 
is for the market to trade into the previous low and then I'm going to be looking for the market to roll over and break to the downside. And this would be the first opportunity to start to look for shorts once again. But that's not going to be next week and it may actually be a couple of weeks before I trade silver again. And finally, what about Bitcoin? Again, another market which is essentially inverse with the dollar because it's priced in dollars like silver, like gold that we're looking at here, like euro dollar. And this market is also approaching its previous low in a downtrend. I've highlighted the fact that this should be considered just a bear market like we looked at in New Zealand franc, big sell off, takes longer to correct. And if you're going to be long Bitcoin, you really run the risk of trading into this previous low and rolling over. So there's multiple charts here where I would not be surprised to see them come higher on a little bit of risk on sentiment over the next week or so, and then potentially run into some trouble and roll over. And that would also fit the mechanics of how monthly candles are printed. So unless or until we clear these previous lows and ideally do it with momentum, I think the bigger risk for these markets is to the downside. I think the bigger risk is for risk off to come into crypto and stocks in the near term. And so I am still currently focused on further declines in these markets, including Bitcoin for the time being. Okay, so let's wrap up the video by having a look at US stock markets to see if they fit in with what we've discussed in this video so far. Starting with the SPX, you can see the first thing to note here is this orange level. Why is this important? This is one of the major implied volatility ranges and it's the upper bound of the implied volatility range of the SPX. And this is a range which is implied through the options market and it acts as a natural barrier in stocks and not only the SPX but you will also see the Nasdaq, the Dow Jones and the Russell have all traded into their upper implied volatility range. The last time this happened when all four of these stock markets traded into their implied volatility range it was the low of the range on the 16th and the 17th of June. So there is a strong reason for stock markets in the US to start to roll over. And this would be really a decision point for stocks. If we were to blow through these levels with momentum, and especially if we started to correct and maybe test the overside, that would be a sign actually that the bear market probably is over. I think based on everything we've discussed, we could very well see, just as I looked at in the dollar pairs, for example, one or two more weeks of risk on sentiment and I think possibly even one. Maybe we just get a rally next week and then we get poor non-farm payrolls data and that catalyzes the reversal to the downside in stocks and also the DXY to the upside. Just an idea. We'll have to wait and see how things play out. But we are approaching in stocks just as we're approaching those other markets, Kiev resistant, which could turn the market and start the next risk off move. We're also approaching those levels in stocks. So keep an eye out for the 4177.51. I wouldn't be surprised to see this coming up and testing this level. That is going to be a very significant area to start to see if stocks roll over to the downside. You can see in the NASDAQ, we've also tested the upper bound of the implied volatility range and we've taken out already the previous high over here. So again, perhaps we come up a little bit higher over the next week or so. And if we start to stall out and then break back down below this level, that's going to be a sign that the next sell-off to the downside is in place. The Dow Jones has also taken out its upper bound. Again, perhaps we rally a little bit higher on some near-term risk on sentiment into the previous highs. But just as those other markets are approaching the undersides of their previous lows, these are also trading into resistance areas. And finally, the Russell, which just ticked the upper bound of its implied volatility range before the whole thing resets again into the next month. And that was all four stock indices therefore taking out their upper bounds. So again, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit more upside into the 1918.4, but we are approaching areas now where we could roll over in the next week or two. And again, just as we discussed in the other markets, that would print a potential down month in these markets in terms of the next monthly candle to be printed. And the final thing I want to leave you with is the VIX because the VIX itself is also approaching a very significant level at the 1845. If the VIX comes down and sells off into this level perhaps next week and this sell off into the 1845 coincides with 
the retest of the lows in the dollar pairs with the test of the previous resistance areas in stocks. And we start to bounce from the 1850, which I think there is a very good chance. I believe all of these things are painting a picture of where the next big risk off move could start, not just in stocks, but in markets in general. So that is it for me for this week, guys. I've laid out for you exactly why I do not think the rally in equities as of yet should be treated as the end of the bear market. The commodities market does not confirm that. The bond market does not confirm that. The forex market does not confirm that. The fundamental outlook does not confirm that, especially as core PCE is still rising and the Fed itself is saying more rate hikes are on the way. And when we combine all of the technicals together, we could even be able to pinpoint potentially alongside how monthly candles are printed, the next big risk off moves in markets. If we blow through the 1845 in the VIX to the downside, if we blow through all of the levels highlighted in this video to the upside, yes, we will have to look at this and say, you know what, perhaps this recent move to the upside has legs and perhaps the risk of a market capitulation has receded. I do not think that's the case as it currently stands. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please let me know by liking, sharing and subscribing. A big thank to everybody who does that on a regular basis. And a big thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel so far. I want to wish you a fantastic weekend and I want to wish you all the best in your trading next week. The only thing left to say is take care and don't forget to trade safely.